Hey guys, it's the end of October, which means Halloween is coming up. So today I dressed up as this character, Steve Bonnet. I don't know if you ever heard of him. He's from this niche TV show, Our Flag Means the Ooh, ooh, kill him, ooh. Wow, this season is actually over. It doesn't seem real that a month has passed already. Like, that seems insane to me. Any hope that I had left for this series is dead and it's not the only thing that died this episode, but at least they put it out of its suffering just like one other thing this episode. I genuinely don't know what to say, so I think this video is going to be shorter. I mean, we'll see. So let's just start this mess. Uh, I'll ramble more at the end of the video. If you haven't seen my previous videos on Our Flag Means Death, then I definitely recommend checking that out before watching this one, because I'll continue lots of discussions that I started in these previous videos. Once again, a disclaimer for people that actually like this season and like watching it and, you know, have a good experience with it, don't watch this video. Just a heads up, this video is going to be mainly negative. I don't really like this season, so if you like it and you don't want to listen to me just shit on your favorite show for like 20 minutes, then click off. Don't ruin it for yourself. This week I actually didn't watch it with Vic, but here's the usual thank you for her because she deserves it. Thank you, Vic. Love you. And now that the intro is over, we can finally start the discussion. So let's jump right into it. Great bonnet to judge. I'm definitely fucked. This made me so irrationally mad. I feel genuinely stupid for not predicting this. Like, that's on me for giving them the benefit of the doubt. Like, I genuinely didn't think that the writers could go this low. Before I start, I'm just going to say the same thing that I said in my last video. I don't hate that it happened, I hate how it was done. You know what? No, fuck that. I hate that it happened. Because why did it have to happen? By killing off Izzy, the person that got arguably the only good redemption arc this season, they kind of fucked up the entire message. Izzy changed himself for love. He saw his mistakes and he actively tried to fix them, yet he was still killed off. What was the message? No matter how hard you try, you can never fix your fucking mistakes and you're going to die anyways. It plays onto the very overused trope of the antagonist dying after they realize all their mistakes. Why wasn't he able to just live happily like everyone else? Wouldn't it make more sense to make him live with all the shitty things that he did and grow to be a better person? It kind of reminds me of that entire fucking Bojack scene. Life's a bitch and then you die, right? Sometimes. Sometimes life's a bitch and then you keep living. And I think that's what they should have done with Izzy. Let him live and try to fight himself now that he isn't with Blackbeard. He never even got to experience living without Ed because Steed immediately threw him back on the fucking ship. Then Izzy had to make up this entire coping mechanisms with fucking sharks to even cope with the fact that his abuser is on the same ship. Yeah, right. Remember the shark story and how it was never addressed again? Yeah. Ed had no right to act like losing Izzy was his biggest nightmare when literally like what, two weeks ago or something? He shot him in the leg and then walked away when he assumed that Izzy killed himself. They had barely any interactions after this and none of them indicated that Ed suddenly found his love for Izzy, enough of love to call him family. I'm not saying that he couldn't have developed these feelings while he was in his spiritually awakened guilty sad era, but this was simply not shown. Like in their last interaction before this one, Izzy just pretty much spoke to Ed and was like, oh yeah, I go do that, be happy. Well, Ed didn't really care much about Izzy and just, I don't know, fucking thought about fish. And then Izzy dies and Ed is all mopey, like, oh, you were family, fuck you. Got high as fuck, shot him in the leg, barely talked to him, and suddenly you care so much about him. I think it would have been a lot better if it was shown throughout the season that Ed is starting to realize how badly he's been treating Izzy. And that's why he'd break down when he'd die, because he'd realized that, oh, I, I can't actually fix that now, he's dead. I just wish they didn't go the you don't know how much you love something until you lose it route. Like that's just fucking stupid and dumb. Ed lost Izzy multiple times and didn't care until now. Like even in season one, Izzy literally jumped on the fucking boat and had to leave because of the fight with Steed and Ed was pretty chill with that. Also, Ed calling Izzy family when Izzy confessed his love to him feels kind of like... We're, we're family. Oh yeah, family 
In fact, like what even is this dynamic? Jesus. Also, Buttons landing on Izzy's grave didn't really seem very heartwarming or sad or whatever feeling I was supposed to feel there. I didn't feel it. I, I didn't care for it. Buttons did not care for Izzy and Izzy did not care for Buttons. Like Buttons left before the entire unicorn event happened and also wasn't part of the post-deed revenge that started liking Izzy because they saw that he's kind of a victim too. So this moment just fell flat for me. It was more of a, oh, remember how we wrote off Buttons in like episode 4? Well, <laughs> here he is. Did, did you forget about him? Because he's here. Than anything symbolic or something. And last thing, Izzy saying that they both wear Blackbeard because he fed him poison or whatever also felt weird. Because yeah, Izzy wasn't the greatest guy, but as was shown in season 1, Blackbeard pretty much just did his own thing and Izzy just blindly followed him around because he admired him so much. For years I've followed your every whim, I've managed your increasingly erratic moods, I've massaged this crew when they were worried about your judgement. Mm, sounds stressful, Izzy. It is. But I did all that because I was honoured to work for the legendary Blackbeard. The most brilliant sailor I had ever met. He liked the idea of Blackbeard, this scary, strong, self-assured maniac, feared by the entire sea. Izzy encouraged it because he loved it. He loved that he was able to be right-hand man of the greatest pirate out there. But let's say, if Izzy would realize what Blackbeard is doing is wrong, would he even be able to stop it? Would Blackbeard care that Izzy doesn't like it? The answer is, big obvious, no. Just like when Izzy didn't like Steed Bonnet, Ed didn't care. Izzy was just pretty much a follower. Like, for example, is the cultist worse than a cult leader because they admire him and encourage him? Ed was shitty with or without Izzy, uh, but Izzy loved that. So he praised him for it. I don't think that Izzy manipulated him into doing bad stuff. The only time that he actually fed him poison was in season 1 when Ed was in a very vulnerable state and Izzy threatened him, which made Ed relapse. He felt like he needed to get rid of everything that reminded him of Steve Bonnet, which also meant the good manners and being nice and Edward inherently. But before that, in season 1, it just looks like Izzy followed whatever shenanigans Ed came up with and followed them blindly. Now that I look back at the entire season, it should have been completely obvious that he was going to die. They paid a little bit too much attention to him, considering how much they neglected every other crew member, except Steed and Ed. I think his entire redemption arc was set up so that he can get redeemed and then get killed for shock value. Character deaths can be so impactful when they fit the story, when they make sense, but here his death was kind of just meaningless. I know that life's a dig and people just die sometimes, but here he was just fucking shot, you know, and not even in like a meaningful way. Like his death was just thrown in there. I didn't finish his arc because he didn't sacrifice himself for someone or anything like that, so it wasn't like this big great last thing that he did. And it didn't make sense character-wise because it would be way better if he went off and try to find new meaning in life now that he isn't with Ed. There was no symbolism nor anything. I can appreciate a good character death, but this just wasn't it. It felt like the writers just put him out of his misery now that he served some purpose for the protagonists and that just feels evil. I didn't really care too much about them after like episode 4. They are rushed, they are messy, and they kind of feel like caricatures of themselves at best. I really like the scene where they actually run towards each other because I just pointed at the screen and I started screaming like Oh my god, Steve's dream! That's literally like Steve's dream! And then the dream starts flashing on the screen and it just completely ruins the moment. Yes, I can visibly see that it's supposed to parallel Steve's dream. You don't have to hold my hand. It happened like fucking three weeks ago. I can remember it. I'm not an infant. Why, why do you have to show me again? Also, the fucking conflict of the episode before this one was that Ed wanted to retire and Steed wanted to stay a pirate, but now Steed retired with Ed without any hesitation. It feels like the conflict never existed. Why wouldn't they show us them talking it through? So they can have a little shocking moment at the end, like, oh look, they're not on the ship, they actually retired. 
I don't give a fuck. Seed barely started becoming a pirate and now he's stuck on land again. As I said before, I do think that Steve would give up piracy for Ed, just like Ed did for him in season 1. Because now it feels like the entire argument of episode 7 could have been avoided if Ed just asked Steed to retire with him. When it was way more complicated than that, like Steed just started his career, he was having fun. So maybe he would have some doubts. Maybe he would hesitate for a second, like that's normal. Steed wanted to become a true pirate for Ed. He would have gone with him, of course he would leave piracy for him. But he's allowed to hesitate, he's allowed to think about it for a while. And I would like to see that, I would like to see that entire interaction happening, because it's important in their relationship. They just decided that they're going to stay on land, that they're going to start an inn, that they're going to fucking move in together. Why would you just leave that out? Ed looking at Steed at the wedding like he wants to marry Steed and then them <laughs> moving in together just feels rushed. Their relationship is barely standing at this point. They kept abandoning each other, they kept hurting each other and now we're supposed to believe that they're just going to live happily ever after together? Steve even said this in episode 4. They barely knew each other when they planned on escaping to China together. And that's why Steve panicked. They need to slow down, otherwise they'll just keep making decisions on the whim and they'll keep hurting each other in the process. They barely talked about their relationship this season, so why should we believe that they're super healthy now? Steed was a dick to Zhang, even at the beginning of the episode, and it was still written to be kind of unlikable at the start, just like he was in episode 7, and then he suddenly does a 180 and becomes a loving partner and caring captain. Sure. We had no realization, we had no internal conflict, we had no argument nor anything. Steed was a dick until now and suddenly we're just supposed to root for him. Our flag means that this season has this little problem where they want to make characters dicks, you know, for fun and comedic purposes and then just don't really redeem them. For example, at an episode 5 when he just does shit to please everyone around him and it's supposed to be funny because he's super unaware of it and and he's just like, oh yeah, sure, what, what should I do without actually apologizing? And now Steed is just like super fucking weird at the end with fighting Zhang, you know, to, I don't know, fucking show his masculinity or something. It, it just feels off for Steed and it's never addressed again. And he even does it at the beginning of the episode. He's a dick and he stops being one without realization, without a metaphorical kick in the balls. He just sees Ed and retires immediately. I know that Steve wanted to be a real pirate only for Ed, so when Ed actually wanted to retire, Steve would understand that and follow him. But Steve also just really liked pirating and being on sea, that's why he even became pirate before he even met Ed. So I find it really weird that Steve would just accept living on land again immediately. I do find it super sweet that Steve would just pick Ed over sea without any hesitation, but I would like to see that happening, I would like to see that being developed developed on screen, not just thrown in there. You wrote me a lovely letter. Okay, let's do a rundown of everything that happened to Ed this season. So he was a drug addicted, selfish, egoistic maniac who cared for no one and nothing. Well, he did care for one thing, but that thing hurt him so much he actually went insane. After it left him to the point he became an active danger to everyone around him and himself without any care. Shoots his only friend, assumes said friend killed himself walks away, he gets his head smashed in, somehow survives it, sees his ex-boyfriend, folds immediately, decided to put his ego aside to be able to be on the ship with his ex-boyfriend again, while at the same time making tasks around the ship for the crew to like him, while not really caring much because he actually doesn't care about anyone on the ship except Steed, has complete change of heart after one talk with someone that used to be inferior to him and whose opinion he would never have respected few episodes ago, tells his boyfriend to go slower, apologizes to ex-friend even though he didn't really care much the day before, decides to not kill because he finds it immoral now, fucks with ex-boyfriend, completely gives up on piracy, becomes a fisherman, leaves his ex-boyfriend, the only reason why he literally went insane for two months, gets told he sucks at fishing, goes back to piracy because his ego was hurt, kills again, realizes he loves his ex-boyfriend again, now that his ex-best friend is dying again, suddenly cares even though they had barely any interactions since the said ex-best friend almost killed himself because of him, decides to move in with his ex-boyfriend and once again gives up on piracy. 
it is so fucking weird this season. They completely fucked my girl over. His drug addiction is literally never mentioned after episode 3. Never brought up again. He keeps switching moods and opinions so erratically. Like he has a character change every 10 minutes. At the end of the season, it is kind of unlikable and just complete the mess of a character. Uh, you best believe everybody is poison trained in this household. Yeah, yeah baby. At the end, I don't really care too much about the crew. All the love that I have for these characters is because of season 1, except Jackie, but that was because in season 1 she had like 3 minutes of screen time and now she has 5, so good job girl, you made it, you're part of the revenge, wow. We John disappeared for the majority of episode 8 and I don't think anyone really noticed because every single one of the crew members just feels like a background character right now. They repeatedly just write them out for no reason. Auntie survived the boat explosion with very little injuries, considering the fact that every other Zhang's crew member died in that explosion and Auntie was the only one to survive that. Who even cares at this point? The only scene that actually made me feel anything this episode is the post credit scene. <laughs> it reminded me so much of season one and all these little character interactions were really great and it just, it reminded me how much I really miss season one. I want you for sweet. Oh, thanks, not. I can't. Hi, post-production me here. Uh, I just want to add some stuff that I thought about while editing and uh, don't know where to add really, so this is just like me rambling section. Lucius said at the end of episode 2 that Blackbeard may be a lost cause and that was just such a dramatic scene because right after this we get the entire run montage to show us that Blackbeard really is so fucked up to the point of no redemption and then it goes nowhere. Blackbeard is completely normal after this. What a red herring. Just a Reminder, everything that Blackbeard did this episode, he did off drugs. He said it in the beginning. So this was quote unquote true Blackbeard. I talked about how Blackbeard's drug addiction is never brought up again after that, but I just realized that also his multiple suicide attempts are never mentioned. This is so weird. Alu and Jim were actually split up for no reason. There was actually like no polycule set up nor anything. It wasn't shown that they grew out of love, nothing. They made two new characters and split them up only for the fanzies. I will never actually get over this. Ned was set up as this big great villain and also mentioned like one, you know, like he's known on the island of pirates, but he gets literally killed in the same episodes he's introduced in and then never brought up again. Like he has no impact on anything. Like why would you set up a villain for one episode? Like you had enough of villains, you, you really didn't need to make another one. I genuinely wish that they would focus on Ned this season and start setting him up from episode 1 and then kill him off in episode 6 and not just throw him in there. And Ricky could be maybe like villain of season 3 or something. Like I, I really don't know why they fucking did this, this was just such weird writing. And one last thing, what was the purpose of blowing up the ships? That also kind of went nowhere. Why would you kill most of the pirates in the pirate show and then do nothing with it? It's purely served as a last minute. Oh, the army is here. Ooh, remember Ricky? Because we forgot about him for most of the season. Ooh. This season was a mess. Their budget was cut, they had to shorten this season and you can really feel that. The pacing isn't even off anymore, it's just completely insane. Characters have zero time to develop, they're lucky to be even on screen and not just written off like, I don't know, fucking Sweet, Ivan, Fang, Roach and Wee John. And buttons, of course. The main pair becomes weirdly toxic sometimes and just lazily written. Other pairs either have their arc finished by the middle of the season or dragged until the very end to the point where no one actually cares about it too much. This season was disappointing, which sucks because it was my favorite fucking show and now it just feels meh. I was waiting for the second season immediately after the first one ended. So now that I have to sit here, and you know, just complain about it, like that makes me so sad. If you actually liked it and don't agree with me on anything, that's completely fair. I respect that and understand it. I'm just really sad that this season wasn't as satisfying as season one. The overall experience was really off. I don't know what's in store for Our Fly Means Death. The season finale kind of felt very final. <laughs> with no cliffhanger and all of the plots finished, so I really wonder if this was the final season of Our Fly Means Death. I know that there were three seasons left, 
but maybe their budget was cut short because they were actually cancelled and they were just given one last season for them to finish everything. Hi, post-production me here. I woke up today and saw this Inverse article which interviewed David Jenkins and they talked about how season 3 actually is still planned and maybe even very likely considering all the hype around the season and what the third season should be about and I'm quoting Jenkins right now. What happens after you start a small business together? How does that work? How do you keep a relationship going? What are the problems in a relationship that are more than just, oh, does he like me or does he not like me? How do you be a person for that person and continue to grow with them? What happens if one of them stops growing and you keep growing? That, to me, is a natural outgrowth of what we like in Happily Ever After. <laughs> and I'm not going to lie to you, that sounds weird as fuck. Like, you can just change the genre of your show. If the first two seasons were about the dramatic life of being a pirate, it can suddenly start exploring life as a small business owners but after i thought about it maybe it would be for the best if this season three would purely focus on their relationship because in season two they try to focus on multiple stuff and it went so terribly wrong it was ridiculous so maybe a season like that would be good for the characters i don't know i sure hope we'll get some updates soon and that's the end of the analysis these past four weeks were rough i'm never doing regular posting schedule again like i just spent the last four weekends just editing like a no lifer what, what was that about if you are here from the start or just tuned in today i just want to thank you so much for watching it genuinely means the world to me that you care about what i have to say about this favorite series of ours i don't know what's next for this channel now that i'm done with this our flag means death review series i don't really have anything planned well okay i have one video planned and it's still our flag means death related but i don't know when that will actually release because i need a little bit of a break but after that i think i'll just do more reviews and analysis on my favorite series because i really enjoy this i enjoy talking about my favorite media and then you know like making videos about it and editing and all that but if you tuned in just for our flag means death then that's completely okay. Uh, I sure hope we'll see each other some other time, but if not, then have a good life or something. Thank you for all your support throughout this entire series. Your feedbacks and comments mean the world to me. And I'm just really glad that I reached this nice of an audience. If you haven't seen my previous videos on Our Fly Means Death, then go check them out. I reviewed it every week, it was fucking insane. I also have a Tumblr, so if you want to see some mediocre art or just want to ask me something or talk to me, then uh, go check it out. There should be also my other social medias there. Leave your thoughts about this entire season or this finale or whatever you want to talk about in the comments. I genuinely want to see what other people think about it. I feel like I'm stuck in this negative bubble now and I really can't just enjoy it because I see all these negative things and I, I don't want it to be like that. I really like Our Flag Means Death. So if you really like something or, you know, want to talk about your favorite parts, then drop that there too or maybe just, I don't know, discuss your thoughts. But that's it for me for now. Have a good day, take care, and I'll see you in my next video. Bye-bye. That's that then. He was a good one. Intense. Very intense. He was a fucking nightmare.